Today with Joseph Prince. At the cross, God provided His Son to be the lamb that takes away your sin and also the one that takes your punishment. So you see God's love blending with God's justice, righteousness and mercy met, mercy and truth kissed at the cross. At the cross, you see all the attributes of God magnified, glorified, all the claims of divine holiness fully met, the law of God magnified, the Ten Commandments honoured, and Christ fulfilled the law. We're not under the law because we break the law. We're not under the law because Christ fulfilled the law. That's why we're under grace. By the time Jesus was here, the temple that stood did not have the ark. So one time, I was, I was one of those that was very keen to find out where's the ark. I, I would read books on it, buy you know, books on it, watch Net Geo Doc you on this kind of things and all that. But it's a waste of time, I'll just tell you that, because the real ark has come. I asked, how I knew this was this. I asked the Lord one time, I asked the Father, Father in heaven, isn't it sad when Jesus was here, the temple did not have the ark? And the Father answered me and said, because he was walking outside. <laughs> Opening the eyes of the blind, unstopping deaf ears, raising the dead, cleansing the lepers. Hallelujah! Who needs a, 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 a visual aid when the substance has come? Hey, trust me, kissing a photo is not as good as kissing the real girl. <laughs> Amen. I know, I just kissed my wife just now. So, it's a visual aid to help us understand, okay? Now sit back and watch this visual aid as the ark opens up. If you open up the panels, on the right, the sides, go within, go without, this is what you see. The cross. So it is the person and the work of Jesus Everything the Father has in mind is all about Jesus and the finished work. It's all about Jesus and the finished work. And do you know that whether Israel knew this or not, they could not understand why the cross. Because the cross was not uh, an invention during Moses' time. The cross is a very cruel form of execution that the Phoenicians and later on the Romans got it from the Phoenicians. And it's quite a modern day compared to Moses' time, okay? And that's why when David prophesied, before the cross, the execution of the cross was implemented, David prophesied in David's time, 3,000 years ago. David says, they pierced my hands and my, my feet. So pierced my hands and my feet is crucifixion. It was a messianic psalm. That Jesus, because the, the capital punishment at the time was stoning. But this was crucifixion. So God was prophesying His Son. Let me tell you this, the cross is the place where Everything, all the attributes of God met. God is love, you see it at the cross. God is just, you see it at the cross. God is light, amen. God, God has inflexible righteousness, amen. Holiness, unbending holiness, amen. And that's why when you sin, you're in trouble, amen. But on the other hand, God is love. So how do you see all these attributes at one time? God's love, God's righteousness at the cross. Because at the cross, even though God is just and He will punish sin, hey, you want a judge that is just. You don't want a judge that sort of like, like because of money given to Him, He's sort of like a, 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 a pet, pen, pender to people who are wealthy and then uh, he, he, he sort of like, He's strong on people who are poor. In some countries, you may have that. Let me tell you this, you want a judge who is just. We want a just judge. But we also want a judge whose essence, whose person, whose being is love. God is love. The Bible defines God as love. But God is just. So at the cross, you see His love. You see His justice. Because His justice, you see Jesus being punished. The Son that He loved being punished. But Jesus did no sin. In Him is no sin. He, he knew no sin. But why was He punished? Because He was carrying our sins. So you see, God's judgment. God did not say, oh, He's my Son. Okay, boys will be boys. Never mind. I sweep everything out of the carpet. No. Because he was carrying our sins, your sins and my sins, he was punished. He was judged. He was cursed that you might be blessed. Amen. He was rejected that you might be accepted. Amen. Amen. He wore a crown of thorns so that you and I today can have the peace of God guarding our hearts and minds. Amen, people. Believing for a breakthrough in your situation? 
We'd love to send you a copy of Joseph's book, Unstoppable Faith. Each day, learn a powerful truth backed by God's Word that will build and strengthen your faith as you see more of the grace of our Lord Jesus. Request your copy today. Offer available to U.S. and Canada residents only. So, at the cross, you see God's love. You see God's love. Why? It's not you bearing the judgment. It's not you, your children, suffering at the cross. God provided His Son to be the Lamb that takes away your sin and also the one that takes your punishment. So you see God's love blending with God's justice, righteousness and mercy met, mercy and truth kissed at the cross. At the cross, you see all the attributes of God magnified, glorified, all the claims of divine holiness fully met, the law of God magnified, the Ten Commandments honoured, and Christ fulfilled the law. We're not under the law because we break the law. We're not under the law because Christ fulfilled the law. That's why we're under grace. At this point, we go home, we learn already. Amen? Are you blessed? And the way they came, look at the camp, uh, encampment of the 12 tribes of Israel. In the camp, God says, three tribes to the north, three tribes to the west, three tribes to the east, and, uh, and, the, and the south part, this, sorry, this is the east part. The east part has the largest number of people in the tribe of Judah, so it's longest. So look, look from the helicopter point of view, I, I do not think that the tribes knew how they were camped. But if you look from a helicopter point of view or a mountain point of view, you see the cross. No wonder that prophet Balaam when he was hired to curse Israel from the mountaintop, he looked at it and says, how can I bless those whom God, how can I curse those whom God has blessed? When God looks at Israel, he has not beheld iniquity in Israel. He did not say there's no iniquity, no sin in Israel. He says God did not behold it. Okay? Our comfort is not that there's no sin in us. Our comfort is God does not see our sin. Why? Because God sees the blood. God sees the blood of His Son. Hallelujah! Amen, people. So, um, this, uh, and this is how it's camp. You want to see how the names are? You show them the names. These are the 12 tribes, okay? Now, back to this again. Okay, folks. Now we go one step further today. Let's look at the, the poles here. What are the poles for? You saw how they brought in just now? They did that because they are backslidden. <laughs> they are following the way of the Philistine. They put it on rollers, all right, and bullock cut. Indian style. <laughs> Indian, duh. You know, it's... <laughs> all right. No, no, no bullock cut. All right. No bullock cut and no... By the way, it's very heavy. Even, even right now, it's very heavy. And, uh, uh, and back in those days, the priests are to carry this on their shoulders. David had to learn that the hard way. The priests are to carry this on their shoulders. And the Bible says, you'll put poles on the feet. By the way, everything described about the ark is all... It's all personified. It's all like human, humanized. It's all in terms of his hands. At his, at his, sorry, at the side. At his side, put this. At his foot, put this. Interesting, huh? And by the way, you might think that the altar of burnt offering is the first thing mentioned in the creation of the furnitures during Moses' time, but no, God mentioned the ark first. God starts from inside, outside. Men start from the altar of burnt offering where your sins are forgiven, and then man goes inside. It's good to see God's perspective. This is what Jesus meant, the place of protection. Amen? By the way, listening about protection is the first step to walking in protection. Because if you start expecting protection, God works with faith. The currency of heaven is, like you go to Europe today, you have to change to euro. You cannot use your Singapore dollars. They won't accept. Does that mean Singapore dollars has no value? No. It just means that you are in a, a different country. Well, the currency of heaven, the bank of heaven is faith. You cannot buy God's blessings with your money. All right? But if you show God your faith and He will show you the supply. <laughs> Amen? Are you listening? Jesus turned around and says, your faith made you well. Your faith has saved you. Your faith. Amen? Your faith. I got so many testimonies. The testimony I want to share is something that is important about hearing about divine protection, reading about divine protection. Amen. Amen? This is from a guy from Washington, United States. In a world full of bad news, we need to hear the good news. 
Faith comes by hearing and hearing the Word of God. Amen. And where can you find it? Not in the world, but in the Word of God. Amen. This person, this man says, he's from Washington, United States. I can't even begin to explain how Pastor Joseph Prince's teachings on Psalms 91 and praying powerful prayers are transforming me. I am overwhelmed with gratitude about my Heavenly Father's faithfulness towards me as I write this. While working as a window washer, I would listen to Pastor Joseph Prince's, I don't know how he does it, okay? Window washer and still listening at the same time. I would listen to Pastor Joseph Prince's teaching series entitled Truths from Psalms 91, God's Promise of Protection Review. You know, uh, my, my daughter, for example, she cannot study unless there's noise. And I got, at one time I, I stepped into a room, it was noisy, it was playing praise and you know, worship music, so loud. I said, how do you study? She said, I, 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 can, I, I can study. You know, this is the, the music for her. I mean, one time, she was in a very quiet room. We had a quiet room. We were on holiday, you know, in a quiet room. She cannot study there. I ask her, why? Too quiet. <laughs> so I'm telling you, this generation from city, city people, right? If they go to the countryside and they smell the fresh air, it will knock them unconscious. <laughs> <laughs> and, and the only way to resuscitate them, all right, you back your car, you know, you back your car to where they are lying down there. Your exhaust comes really near, nearly close. I guarantee you, they wake up again, all right? Or anyway, I don't know how he does window washing while listening to my sermon. While working as a window washer, I will listen to Pastor Joseph Prince's teaching series entitled Truth from Psalms 91, God's Promise of Protection. As soon as I finish listening to them, I will replay them all over again. Some of us don't even do that. We listen to the sermon on Sunday, we think we got it. He will replay them all over again. One particular week, two accidents occurred where God's protection was evident. The first accident happened when I was helping my boss fix one of our ladders with the help of an electric grinder. I thought I should wear safety goggles, but just as I took a step to get them, my boss switched on the electric grinder and that immediately sent a piece of aluminium shrapnel flying towards the inside corner of my eye. But even though the metal piece was hot and sharp, it only left me with a minor burn and cut. The wound healed the next day. Two days later, I was working on the back roof of a house when a piece of my equipment began to roll off. I tried to catch it, but ended up sleeping and falling off the roof. It happened so fast, and before I knew it, I somehow landed on some grass, did a roll, and ended up back on my feet. <laughs> now listen, I don't know how I managed to clear the back patio that was 15 feet wide, and the fence that was eight feet high. He had fallen at least 18 feet from the roof, but no bones were broken. I wasn't even sore from the fall. I believe God had protected me and will always continue watching over me. Before that, he was listening and listening and listening. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> amen, 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 amen. One more testimony. And how grace will give you moral excellence. All right. Wrong one. <laughs> I, I got so many testimonies that I told you. All right. This is a, a precious story. And this lady is from Florida. And she says, Pastor Prince, I'm a 48-year-old woman who was involved in an adulterous relationship for over 20 years. When I received Christ, that's a long time, okay? When I received Christ in 2013, I confessed my sin to a church leader and I was told that I would lose my salvation if I continued in this relationship. Now, she was told if she continued, she would lose her salvation. Look at the result of that. He referred me to the Bible account of a woman caught in adultery. Although the leader, now how many know adultery is wrong? Yes, we all agree it's wrong. Amen? Okay, I'm alone. It's wrong. Okay? I'm here to tell you it's wrong. But listen, we're not talking about that. We're talking about how to arrive to moral excellence from here. It's not by law, it's by grace. She said that this guy told her, the leader told her that she would, she would lose her salvation. Well, although the leader intended to help me, and she knew that the leader intended to help me, I ended up feeling afraid, more insecure, and I believed that the Lord would not and could not forgive me. As a result, uh, as a result of insecurity and wrong believing, as a result, I continued with the relationship for another two years. One day, I heard you preach a sermon on the very same passage about the woman caught in adultery. I learned that Jesus neither accused nor condemned the woman who committed adultery. In fact, he said to her, Woman, where are those thine accusers of yours? Neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. The church says, Go and sin no more first, then we won't condemn you. No, Jesus says, I give you the gift of no condemnation. 
receive it, and it will empower you to go and sin no more. Hearing this changed my life totally. I'm happy to say that I'm happy to say that I am no longer in the adulterous relationship, and I'm, I'm in love with the Lord. I'm seeing myself the way my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ sees me. Thank you for delivering God's word. May God continue to bless you and your family. Come on, church. How to get there from here? Now, when the priest carried the ark, number one, they cannot carry the ark. No matter how many priests carry it, it's too heavy. Plus the solid gold, by the way, the lid itself is solid gold. This entire thing is beat out. The work of Jesus, he was beaten to become our mercy seat. Amen? One slap of gold. The lid is one slap of gold. And here, gold and wood. And it's too much for priests to carry. But the amazing thing is this. There was death when they tried to do it the worldly way on a bullock cart, right? When David learned the way of God, God says it must be carried on the shoulders of the priest like this. I'm sure that you all have this. Some of you have this sculpture you bought from Israel, right? How many of you have it? Why are you a backslidden people? Right? <laughs> you all go to Israel so often and none of you bought this? This is mine, by the way. This is uh, in my green room. This picture of the priests carrying the Ark of the Covenant. Okay? And uh, you see a lot of this uh, in, in Israel, you know. Um, but it's very interesting. Just to tell you that uh, it's very heavy, okay? So what you're seeing down here couldn't have happened without God helping. Watch this now. The Bible says when David saw the the pattern of how the ark is to be carried. It's to be carried by the poles on the shoulders of the priests, but it's very heavy. So how can, how can they carry it? But the Bible says something, God help the priests. In other words, watch this. Your part is by faith. When God tells you to serve Him, whether it's children's ministry, whether it's ushering, whether it's coming to church, whether it's doing something for someone, if God tells you, all right, God will never give you something that's heavy. Jesus says, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Because it's from Jesus, whatever the burden is, is always easy. My burden is light. My yoke is easy. Easy, light. Got it? If the Lord tells you to do something, if He tells you to, it's always easy. And the burden is light. So when God tells you to do something, your part is step up by faith. When the priest step up and touch the post and carry it, instead of it becoming heavy, it's sort of the thing carried the priest. How many understand that? The, the, uh, the post carried the priest. It's like the priest is walking on air. It's like spring on, his, on their steps. The Bible says, God help the priest. This, what, what, and every time you, tr you put your hand onto a task that God tells you to, whether it's a ministry, whether it's a mission trip, whether it's like a, a full-time ministry, whatever it is, God tells you to do it and you put your hand forth to it, the moment you touch it by faith, God takes care of the rest. The way of the new covenant is like power steering. Your part is to decide to put your hand on it, all right, and decide to turn this way, the power does the rest. But if it's, it's hard, the ancient way, you know, last time, all right, that's not new covenant. No wonder you are stressed. Amen? How many can tell I enjoy preaching? I mean, but sweat flying, right? I mean, I'm still hard working, right? But I enjoy what I'm doing. Okay? Sometimes I enjoy it so much, you all want it to end. I'm pointing at the right direction. But you all may want it to end, but I, I got so much to share, and I, I, I'll be merciful, okay? But you see, you know, do what you love, and money will follow you. Don't do things for money. Okay? Amen? Some of you are in that job because of the money. Do what you love. <laughs> All right, so let's follow the story. As they carried this, there's a beautiful incident I want to call your attention. By the way, the picture you saw just now, this picture here, is not scriptural. Huh? When they are traveling, when the ark is traveling, it's never exposed. It is covered over with a blue cloth. There's a covering of blue. Most of the furnitures, in the tabernacle, it's covered with purple. The uttermost, uttermost cover is purple, but the ark is blue. What does that tell you? Heavenly. When you look up in heaven, what color is it? It's blue. Why did God choose blue? 
Because God wants to know, heaven is blue. And the high priest, his robe is all of blue. And he even says this, the covering on the ark is all of blue. And the word blue is the word takelet in Hebrew. Takelet, say takelet. And God, in the, under the law, all male, Jewish male must have a prayer shawl with a takelet, a tassel. And this is what Jesus refers to when the Pharisees, they, they want to show themselves more holy than other people. They, are, they don't even have a tassel. They have a, you know, a curtain tassel. They can sweep the floor as they walk. They make broad their phylacteries. They make broad their tassels to impress on people that they are spiritual. But the Bible promised that when the Messiah comes, unto you that fear my name, shall the Son of Righteousness arise with healing in His wings. Kanaf, wings. Wings is, also, the, the part of the tassel is also known as wings. And the blue part, the blue tassel is takelet, blue. Blue. The heaven is takelet, blue. The woman, the issue of blood, she had a disease for 12 years. She went to doctors and all that, nothing better, rather grew worse. When she heard of Jesus, she came to the press behind. Your English Bible says she touched the hem of his garment. But Jewish people know that the hem of his garment is the, the blue tassel. When she touched the blue tassel, her bleeding stopped. She felt in her body, she was healed. And Jesus turned to her and says, daughter, your faith has made you well. Now listen to me. The word blue, takelet, takelet is a noun. It comes from the root word, kala, where Jesus on the cross cried, in English, finished. But in Hebrew or Aramaic, it is kula, exactly the root word for blue. So this whole thing is covered with the finished work. Amen? So in its traveling mode, you don't see the up. You only see the blue. So today, ask your friends, when you look into heaven, what do you see? Can you see Jesus? No. What can you see? Blue. Can you see the, the humanity of Jesus? He's in heaven now. No. Why? It's a blue covering. Trust me, beyond the blue, beyond the blue is Jesus. Amen? God meant for His people to always look at the heavenly man, Jesus, and see the blue. And when you are discouraged and you look down, ancient Israel is reminded, blue, look up. Amen. Be heavenly minded. Well, I don't be heavenly minded. I'm no earthly use. Trust me. None of you is that heavenly minded. Don't flatter yourself, okay? We need some heavenly mindedness. All right, focus on Jesus at the cross. Well, the time came when Israel was about to cross the river Jordan. Okay, and this is what happened. Look at this. Joshua 3, and they commanded the people saying, when you see the ark, so obviously the ark is traveling. The priests are carrying the ark covered with blue. And uh, they say, when you see the ark of the covenant of the Lord your God and the priest, the Levites bearing it, then you shall set out from your place and go after it. Go after Jesus, people. When you see the ark, put your eyes on Jesus for you to see where he's going. You need to put your eyes on him, looking off unto Jesus, the author and finisher of faith. Look away from men, even good men. Look away from Pastor Prince. Look away from everyone but Jesus. Look unto Him. Go after Him. Yet there shall be a space between you and the ark, about 2,000 cubits by measure. I'm going to tell you right now, right now I'm going to tell you this. This time when, when Joshua was carrying the ark, uh, the priests were carrying the ark during Joshua's time, this is the first time Israel was about to step into the promised land after long 40 years of wandering in the wilderness. Okay? And the first one in is the ark. Okay, he went into the river Jordan. Do you know this place where, where the, the crossing took place? It's the lowest place, the Dead Sea, the lowest place on planet Earth. Many of you have been there. What is the meaning? 1,500 years after Joshua and the priests carried the ark into the river Jordan, there will come the true ark. And right at the same spot, he'll be baptized. And then when he comes out of the waters, God will open the heavens and God will say, this people, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Are you listening? There are two times, one time it occurred to me that there are two times God said, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Number one, in the lowest place of Israel, the Dead Sea area where the crossing took place, 
where he was baptized. The other one, the highest place in Israel, Mount Hermon, when he was transfigured, the father said, this is my beloved son. So an advice for parenting, even when your child does well, praise him, tell him you're pleased with him. But when your son does something wrong and fail, affirm him, discipline if you need to, but affirm your love in the lowest places of their life. What a word we've received today. Subscribe to the Joseph Prince Ministries YouTube channel for daily updates. And don't forget to share it with someone you know. You never know who might need to be encouraged today.